A few months ago, I was spending time with God, and it was late at night. It was a Saturday night, and I was all amped up on Jesus. I had just spoken uh, to a volunteer group, and I was like, I'm going to go spend time in the prayer room. And so I went in the prayer room. I took a cup of hot tea and some chocolate, and I was going to hang out with Jesus. This is great, right? So I put my feet up. I have my tea. I have my chocolate. And I make some comment in my mind, or out loud, I think, (laughs) You know, God, let your presence come or something, you know, something about God's presence. And all of a sudden, there's a small conviction in my heart. Now, let me be real clear. I drink frothy coffee every single morning with Jesus because I think things can stir our affections for God that aren't technically spiritual. Frothy coffee stirs my affections for God. Okay, so let me be real clear. I am all for hanging out with God and eating snacks. I've, I've gone on wing dates with God before. I'm all for it. But on this night, I realized this conviction as I'm sitting in a very relaxed position, my feet are up, and I sense this kind of conviction from the Holy Spirit that says, you're asking for my presence, but you're approaching me like you're, it's a movie. It's a little prickly. So you know what I do? I'm like, okay. So I fold up my stuff. It's 9 o'clock at night. And I say, I'm going to go to bed, and I'm going to do better in the morning. And so I get up at 5 in the morning, and maybe for the first time ever, I don't take frothy coffee. And, and I had heard a sermon prior to, and if you would have asked me what this sermon about, I wouldn't have told you this part. Hey, if somebody showed up late to worship on a Sunday morning in your church, would that person say, Hello, I'm here. You can start now. No, you wouldn't, right? And, and yet, sometimes this is what we do with God. Like, hey, are you proud that we're worshiping you now? Do you want to come to me? But here's the reminder, friends. In heaven at all times, there is worship of our creator, father, and king 100% of the time. And so that next morning, I wake up at 5 in the morning, and here's what I do. I don't take coffee, and I don't take snacks, and I open up the Bible to Revelation where there's lots of pictures of heaven. And this is probably the first time ever, because again, in my imagination, every time I'm at the feet of Jesus, I'm literally at the feet. I'm always in the front row of heaven. And so I show up, and I say, God, can I just be in the back row? Please, can I just have a taste of heaven, of what is already happening Right now, the angels are singing, and I want to be part of it. And so for two weeks, this is what I did as I spent time with God. I no longer wanted it to be about me where I'm being entertained. It was that I wanted to join with what was happening in heaven. We start this day with the mindset, not of, hey, how can we be entertained, but how can we join with what is happening in heaven? How can we give glory to our creator, father, and king in this moment? And so I ask that you join with me because right now, around the clock, we know this in Revelation, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. 